time for the Ron and Brian podcast. Get ready to fill your ears with the latest news, politics, current events, and whatever else we feel like talking about this week. And now, your hosts, Ron and Brian. All right. Good evening, everybody. It is Sunday night. It is eight o'clock and it is time for episode 272 of the Ron and Brian podcast. As always, I'm joined here by my good friend, Brian. Brian, I know it has been quite the day for you. Um, All week long, you have been following with extreme interest the are they or aren't they story of Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, which apparently uh, they are seems to have said, I mean, she was, she was in the Kansas city Chiefs box. She was sitting next to mama Kelsey. She chest bumped during a Travis Kelsey touchdown. Brian, your dream has come true. The new power couple has emerged. Listen, um, I mean, there have been so many suitors over these past few years for the heart of the fair maiden Taylor Swift. Um, we we had Joe Jonas, uh, uh, Ralphie Jonas, um, their cousin uh, uh, Mordecai Jonas. Then there was uh, John Mayer was in the mix uh, yep. for a couple of times. There was some dude from the Killers over this uh, summer, maybe 1974, he was there. Um, not really sure who else, right? Tom Hiddleston, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, and then obviously, let's not forget uh, Bill Cosby. He had, uh, he had, you know, they had that summer, uh, uh, summer to winter, um, that May October so, romance. Damn right, <laughs> do do do. Um, <laughs> but yes, I mean, it seems like uh, you know everything's pointing to it. Uh, America's new power couple. Um, it is only a short period of time before we're going to get what we all want, which is. Um, uh, Travis Kelsey, um, on, uh, uh, America's favorite, uh, home singer. <laughs> Matt Singer, maybe. Sure. 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 Well, in the meantime, we are the original power couple, Ron and Brian, and it's time for the way we start each and every week. Drink of the week. Nazdrovia. <laughs> Drink of the week. Slancha. Who's drink of the week? Drink of the week. Drink of the week. Uh, Brian, if you week. don't mind, I'll I'll start this week uh, because you know I, I feel like I need to make amends with you. I've I've gone down the pumpkin beer route. Um, the last few weeks, which I know um, you you take issue with. So since it was a, a very cool, rainy, nasty weather weekend wise here, um, I have moved on to stouts, Brian. We reserve nice. stouts for the fall and the winter. And this is one nice. that I have uh, brought to the show before by Cape May Brewing. Their white cream stout ties the room together. The brew abides. I mean, it is just a, uh, it's a delicious stout brewed with coffee beans, cocoa nibs, lactose, and vanilla. It clocks in at a sturdy 8.5%. So it's going to be a good evening. Uh, You know it. You love it. Cape May Brewing ties the room together. Not only that, but it's got everything going on, but it also has a very nice hue. Ron, talk to me. It's just delicious. I mean, you get the coffee, you get the you get the vanilla, you get the lactose right at the end, tickling your tonsils, and it's just a it's a delicious beer. It's one of my favorites from Cape May. Oh, take another sip. You deserve it, my friend. You have earned that right to drink that beer. So, Brian, um, what are you bringing to the table as your drink of the week this week? Oh, Ron. Oh, Ron, 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 you're so, you're so cute. You are adorable with your alcohol um, beverage, thinking that that's going to be an appropriate drink of the week. No, Ron, I'm an American and I'm a proud American. I have moved past this thing that you call alcohol and I've moved on to opioids. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, my drink of the week, I'm working on 50 milligrams of tramadol which as you can see right here comes in a nice little white little tablet, oh. which I was prescribed earlier today by my doctor. Hold up. Right. A little, uh, little coffee or a little water to take that down with. Absolute water, water. All right. Um, 
I've been told no alcohol to be drinking um, while I deal with my uh, moderate to severe pain in my right knee. That's right, Ron. Tramadol is a strong painkiller from a group of medicines called the opioids. It doesn't stop the pain completely, but you will not be able to feel it as much. That's right, Ron. There's absolutely no lactose in this. There's no chocolate nibs or hints of hops or malts. This is just pure pharmaceutica tramadol, 50 milligrams in my body. I, I'm a little surprised. I thought the cool thing to do was to like crush the pill with like the uh, the handle of your knife and then scoop it up on the blade and snort it. But you you decided to just take it and let the time release actually work. Absolutely. Listen, um, if there's one thing that I do is I follow um, my doctor's orders. When my doctor says to me, hey, take this pill, I'm going to take the pill. I'm not going to grind it up, <sniffs> sniffle it up. All right. Fair enough. Well, I uh, I hope that helps. And uh, I think I have a feeling I know what this next topic is going to be. But let's get on to Beef of the Week. <laughs> Brian, I think I might know, but if surprise me maybe with something different. But what's your beef this week? It is the American medical system. Um, earlier this week, I received a cortisone shot to my right knee. This was Thursday morning. Went to go see my orthopedic doctor. He's been providing me care for the past. I would say maybe six months on my right knee, started with a torn ACL, months of physical therapy, you know, put in the work, put in the labor, um, kind of started to reach a point where I just wasn't making any more progress. And it was, it was just hurting me sitting, standing, hurting, standing. Um, uh, so by the time I went to him this past Thursday, he said, listen, um, it seems like you're not making any more progress. The next step in this is let's do a cortisone shot. I was like, all right, when do I come back for this? He's like, oh, no, no, no. We're going to do that shit right now. I was like, bring it on. Bring if, it on. If I, can, if I can interrupt for just a moment, and you've kind of kept quiet about this over the past few months, you, you originally hurt your knee um, lifting a bus off of a small child. I mean, you didn't. What's you it? don't like to be known as a hero, but you you rushed in there. It was a big burst of adrenaline. You lifted the front of the MDTA bus up, tweaked that right knee, and it really hasn't been the same since then. Listen, Ron. Um, when you are walking down the street and you see a New York City bus that has been um, hijacked by a um, uh, an undocumented migrant who has been welcomed into New York City with open arms, has not been taught how to properly drive or how to um, purchase their own vehicle, but has just broken the law because, you know, New York City's woke prosecutors are not under any circumstances providing an environment where people shouldn't be stealing um, city buses. When you see you know, some of New York City's, um, you know, next generation um, damaged by this behavior, by, um, you know, by an out of control, lawless society. Um, you jump in. You don't think twice. You step in. So, right, um, exactly. so, so I saw this child who was pinned under a bus. You could see that the transmission fluid was leaking all over it. Um, uh, just outside, there was a crackhead who was um, lighting uh, matches and throwing them at the child. Um, I just said, you know what, this is this, this calls for, uh, this, this, this requires my assistance. So I jumped in, lifted, um, I lifted the bus, one arm, right. one arm should have done two in hindsight. I should have done lifted two. I should back. have had the weight. The I should have had the weight lifted evenly and distributed amongst, amongst my body by lifting it with my left hand. What it did was it applied too much pressure to the right. Um, well, it was a lot of torque on the right knee. As such, I've been suffering. Um, so I got my cortisone shot earlier this week and Thursday couldn't really feel the difference. I'm going to say this to you. I woke up Friday, felt amazing, felt my, felt as if, um, there was absolutely nothing wrong with my knee, uh, like walking comfortably, sitting comfortably. I couldn't remember the last time my knee felt this good. Uh, at around four o'clock in the afternoon, I sat down and holy shit, did I start to feel pain when I stood up? 
um, within a very short period of time, about two hours um, as I was commuting home, the pain grew significantly worse and worse to the point where um, I was uh, visibly uh, walking in pain, um, limping. Um, people uh, walking down the street were asking me if uh, they could assist in some way. People offered me car rides. This is what happens when you move to the great state of New Jersey. Um, Hudson County, I mean, um, the citizens, I, I cannot thank them enough. Um, they really rallied to uh, my support. Um, never would have seen this kind of behavior in New York City. It's, just, it's a dying city, Ron. Um, However, uh, Friday night, literally couldn't walk. Saturday, could not walk. Today, I went to the ER. Um, well, I first went to urgent care, because that's what we do in America. We go to urgent care first. Um, at which point, I was pretty much told, well, we, can't, we don't have any x-ray um, uh, machinery here, so there's nothing that we can do for you. At which point, I tried to explain to the doctor there uh, that uh, this was not a bone problem, that this has been something going on for months and now just aggravated to the point where I now was struggling to walk, that uh, I, I, I needed something for soft tissue. Um, at which point she immediately jumped to, well, we need to rule out whether you have an infection from the shot, and that's what's caused this problem, or we also need to rule out whether you have a uh, blood clot that is uh, stuck in your, uh, it's stuck somewhere in your leg. Oh. Um, what about trying to diagnose what it is? <laughs> this is my problem with the American medical system. The way it's set up is that instead of taking a look at the problem and saying, well, statistically speaking, this is most likely what's wrong. And let's start treating that. The right. It's set up is let's figure out the worst case scenario and rule that out. Start knocking those out. And then start working down in severity until we get to something where it likely is the cause, which basically um, wastes your time, um, wastes um, uh, valuable resources in the medical field, uh, medical costs sky high, um, and you end up getting tests and treatment that is not required whatsoever. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, and I hope I hope things get better soon for you. Thanks, buddy. Sure. Ron? Yes. What's bothering you? Uh, so my beef this week, Brian, and probably for the last few months, um, are the New York Yankees, who today were mathematically eliminated uh, from the 2023 playoff race, uh, wrapping up uh, a dismal season, would you call it? I'd actually go so far as to call it disastrous. La they, they ended last year in first place. Right. Um, in their division, I think expectations were quite high. This team had, um, uh, you know, um, uh, added some pieces that were supposed to uh, make us better. Tremendous amount of talent on the team. Tremendous payroll, as always. Um, and just uh, bottom of the barrel finish. Um, if it weren't for, you know, I think the, the Blue Jays might be the worst. I'm not sure who is below us in the American League East. Red Sox. Yes. <clears throat> Red Sox. Just very disappointing. Just very disappointing. Yeah. Uh, as as we mentioned to people, we were at Old Timers Day uh, a couple of weekends ago. Uh, deservedly so. Aaron Boone was the only person who was brought onto the field that was booed. Uh, he sure. was part of that, that 98 World uh, Championship team. Uh, Got to get rid of Aaron Boone. Yeah. I guess maybe my beef is Aaron Boone because I do love the Yankees. I'm not a fan of Aaron Boone's management. Well, do you think that um, a different manager would have gotten better performance out of these players? I mean, I, I saw a statistic earlier this week that the Yankees as a team had the second lowest batting average in all of baseball this season. So this wasn't just a, a couple players underperforming. I mean, there were regular times where you looked at the starting lineup and there was maybe two players at most that were hitting above 250. I mean, it's a, it's a leadership issue, Brian. It starts from the top down. Uh, when there is a bad episode of this podcast, who do people look at? They look at you, Brian, as 51% ownership. Uh, when Matt falls off the wagon yet again uh, and you know wakes up in a, in a pile of his own vomit uh, on the streets of uh, New York City, um, who do they blame? They blame you because you're the 51% owner. Sure. So it really is, you know, it's the case of uh, of top down. Trickle down, Brian. Uh, trickle down works in economics. It works in management as well. Why do you think it is that I am to blame for these problems when um, we had worse problems 
under your championship and you um you blamed them on uh the poor if i remember correctly um, I there was don't. um i i do recall there were times where um you know uh, you had some uh, technical difficulties and you were unable to do the show and when I said to you, uh, you know, this is something that, you know, as champ, you're like, listen, don't talk to me about being the champ. You know, it's these effing poor people in, 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 in my neighborhood who are holding me back. I believe you even blamed the Jews about four or five times. <laughs> you know, I don't recall that happening, actually. Yeah, I remember I remember when I remember asking you, hey, do you still enjoy living where, where you are? And you're like, no, this is neighborhoods. It's gone all to the Jews. I think uh, the opioids might be uh, might be kicking in on you. You're starting to hallucinate. You're starting to really uh, get these false memories. I feel for you, my friend. I really do. I do. Thank you. Thank um, you so much. let's uh, like, let's get like to sorry. our yeah. <laughs> let's get to our stories of the week, Brian. We sure. always like to make sure we grab uh, a couple of stories that so they don't fall through the cracks, and we make sure we get to them. Uh, Brian, what is your story of the week this week what is the story that you want to make sure we cover tonight my story of the week um it's not what i would consider a uh, a feel good story going all the way out to melbourne australia um and the story of what is her name again um hold on wilkinson ian wilkinson his wife who's the one that okay so Aaron there was Patterson a is one the one before charged Perfect. So Erin Patterson is a young lady uh, uh, living in Melbourne, Australia. She invites her pastor and his wife, apparently in um, Australia, they let their religious leaders have sex. Hmm. Um, and um, she invites her, her pastor, his wife. Um, she is uh, then joined by her former in-laws, um, Don and Gail Patterson, for lunch on July 29th. So it's, it's five people at this table. Um, and, and what makes this meal noteworthy, why we are talking about it months later, is that it, with, within days, Aaron Patterson is the only surviving member of this lunch. What, um, uh, what did she feed them, you may ask? Uh, not opioids? No, no, you're supposed to say, what did she feed them? I said, what you may ask. Them? What, 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 she what, fed what did them, they feed them? She fed them beef Wellington, and you know me, Ooh. I love a good beef Wellington. And um, it, it's it's you've you've got the, the the tenderloin, the fillet tenderloin inside an onion and mushroom uh, uh, pate, if you would, right. um, or a mixture. I don't know. Inside, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, phyllo dough, phyllo, phyllo, uh, a phyllo dough, a pastry dough, phyllo dough. To the thought. However, allegedly, Aaron did not use your normal type of um, button mushrooms. She apparently went to an Asian food market and purchased deadly death cap mushrooms. Hmm. Within hours of this meal, Pastor Ian Wilkinson passed away. His wife passed away. Aaron's in-laws, Don and Gail Patterson, passed away. Aaron, alive. While she has not been charged with any crime yet, Melbourne police have announced that she is a suspect in these suspicious deaths as they do believe that she fed them these poisonous mushrooms intentionally. The story has Australia abuzz and we will continue to follow it. Did uh, has Gordon Ramsay like uh, stitch this on his TikTok channel yet? Like, no, not the death cap mushrooms. It's, it's fucking raw. raw. It's fucking raw. God, I love. What was that show that he did? Not the, um, uh, not the one where he goes into the kitchens, into the restaurants, and but where he's got the the reality show with the different. Um, well, uh, I mean, chefs. he did. He did Hell's Kitchen. I think that might That's be what you're referring to. I am thinking of Hell's Kitchen, where 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 every week somebody had to um uh throw their um uh throw their um uh, uh what do you call that thing? Their chef jacket. Uh, their jacket, yes. It was terrible. All right. Brian Ron, what's my, your story? My story of the week, we go down to the great state of Florida, or Florida, as we like to say. Uh, where Murder. a woman allegedly attacked two people at a pool uh, for doing stretches 
that she thought were inappropriate. Uh, this involves Amanda Ferragamo, age 41, who was arrested in Sumter County, Florida after the incident. Um, we have her mugshot here uh, where she was clearly attempting to smuggle an iPhone 15 in her mouth into the jail. Uh, apparently, it involves a male and a female victim. Um, the, uh, the female victim told deputies that she and the male victim were doing stretches when, when Ferragamo smacked and shoved them both. Now, what's weird is the story took place at 2.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Why are you doing stretches by the pool? I think perhaps that was sex, Brian. You think? Just going, I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, but the female victim then stated that the defendant accused them of both of doing inappropriate activities, began to shove her and smacked her across the face. The female victim uh, ended up with a red mark on her face indicating that she was hit as well. <clears throat> Turns out the, uh, the man who was not named in the, uh, in the case uh, and Ferragamo are connected in some way, uh, which made the incident domestic in nature. So uh, Ferragamo was transported to the Sumter County Detention Center and charged with two counts of battery. Your, uh, your audio appears to have cut out. That is rough, Ron. I mean, it sounds, the whole story sounds a little sketchy. I feel like maybe she caught her man banging another woman and maybe took uh, matters into her own hands. Uh, let me ask you a question, Ron. Is sure. it worse? Do you think it's worse if you catch the person having sex? Or do you think it's worse when you find out that they're having a sexual relationship? I think the catching them, I think the visual um, is that much more shocking. I mean, I'm sure hearing about it is not great either. But the actual physical act of catching them and having to uh, see it. Not great either. Yeah, I don't think so either. All right. We're both in agreement. You know, it's so rare that we're both in agreement. Well, you know, sometimes, sometimes. All right. Sometimes, Brian, sometimes, sometimes. It's another, it's another football Sunday, and that means we got to review our locks of the week. Locks. Oh, uh, Brian, I have to. And I know you're going to try and stop me, but I will not allow you to stop me this time because what you did this past week was insane. Um, you were saying, New England, you hate the Jets. We know you hate the Jets. New England was playing at New York, uh, minus three. Closer game than a lot of people felt, but New England pulled it out 15 to 10. And then in a high-scoring affair, um, out on the West Coast, you had Seattle minus four and a half versus Carolina. Seattle wins by 10, 37 to 27, uh, moving you to six and zero oh on the season. Absolutely amazing. Can you can you tell me exactly how you've gotten to where you are? Ron, these uh, these games just pop off to me. They become painfully obvious that this is exactly um, the right way to go. Um, it's a skill that I'm, I'm I'm surprised not everybody has. Is that it's something that just comes so simple to me. Um, and the reason why I, th I I don't think that it is such a big deal uh, is the fact that I look right across at you um, and I see that you also went two and zero last week. Cowboys only ten and a half against the Cardinals. Watched the score earlier today. You sat there and said, not only do I think the Cardinals are going to cover the 10 and a half spread, um, but I think they are going to, um, uh, I think the Cardinals are going to win the whole game. Cardinals at 28-16 victory. That was your first win of the week. And then also earlier today, Packers minus two against the Saints. Um, you sat there and said, give me the Saints. Um, there's no way the Packers win by two. And you were correct. Packers only win by one ron you are six and oh this season how are you doing it I, you know again um similar to your knee when i look at these uh these these uh, lines i get a throb you know deep in my body and it just kind of directs me as to where i should pick uh speaking of that what do you have for this coming week all right so this week and again i think uh arizona helped uh, reveal cowboys for the mid team that they are so i am taking those new england patriots that you liked last weekend uh plus seven and a half at dallas and then la chargers uh look to possibly be the real deal minus four and a half versus 
visiting Las Vegas Raiders. Brian, who do you got next week? Listen, I'm going out on a limb here. Um, looked at the Eagles this week very closely. I think their run has um, is, is, is starting to wane. Um, they're not the powerhouse team that I think the uh, uh, Vegas started to see. Uh, the Commanders are getting seven up seven points against the Eagles. Um, seems high to me after the Commanders' strong showing over the past two weeks. I'm saying let's go Washington. Dan Snyder's not there. You can proudly bet on Washington now. Also, Saints laying three and a half over the Buccaneers. Um, I think that Troy Aikman's going to have a great week this week with um, uh, New Orleans. So let's go Saints minus three and a half over the Bucks. All right. Remember, folks, bet with your head, not over it. Uh, so, Brian, you have uh, yes. you've mentioned repeatedly over the last few weeks how you are now a, a New Jersey resident. You say that New York City uh, is a dying city, but you now live in a state where one of its two senators uh, is uh, under investigation. Uh, Senator Robert Menendez uh, for apparently taking bribes, uh, turn, cashing in his position. Uh, in return for uh, his power and influence as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Brian, defend your state, defend your senator. Oh, Ron, this is absolutely disgusting. This is this is politics at its worst. Um, you know, as, as a keen observer of the comings and goings inside of Washington, we all saw what happened recently. Um, Lauren Boebert, who is just a fave of the far right, she is, you know, considered a poster child for the future of the Republican Party, um, exhibited some very scandalous behavior in a Colorado theater and um, really was just basically um, the first story on most new news programs for the week. Um, what's going to happen when um, what's going to happen when you've got, um, you know, all the eyes on Republican bad behavior? Um, what's going to happen? They're going to immediately. And this is the narrative of the mainstream media, which we know is controlled by Lachlan Murdoch, who is now in charge of uh, Fox News. What do they do? They, they, they randomly spin the wheel of Democrat um, uh, uh, Congress people and they say, all right, let's pick one to take down. They spun the wheel earlier this week. And who did they end up with? Just just a one of America's favorite citizens, the son of of uh, of immigrants who came here from Cuba, uh, Robert Menendez. Um, not to be confused with the Menendez brothers who shot their father. This is not the um, uh, the third sibling. A lot of people thought so earlier this week, but that is not the case. Um, anyway, my point being is, um, you know, these claims of gold ingots being found in his house, um, uh, you know, planted um, stories of envelopes filled with cash. Listen, what self-respecting man does not walk around with envelopes filled with cash so that he can purchase fine gifts for his wife whenever she wants it? Rod, right now, how many pockets of cash do you have right now on your in your shirt pocket? I mean, at um, least four or five, correct? I, I don't believe I have any at the moment. Oh, you you must have taken them out before the show, so you didn't yeah, look like, you didn't want to look bulkier. Um, I, I don't. I I'm going to say this. I walk. You know, even though I'm walking the dangerous, crime ridden streets of New York City on a regular basis, I always walk with a minimum of four to five envelopes filled with cash, just you know, to help um, homeless people uh, who are uh, uh, asking for change. Um, Bob Menendez, this is just is just clear misdirection. So that we are we are under. You know, we're we're now looking at somebody other than Lauren Boebert. Politics at its worst, disgusting, Ron, disgusting behavior. What, what's interesting is uh, the New York Post writes about, you know, these new charges, but um, instead spends most of the article going back to the 2017 corruption case, which he uh, beat in court, uh, but because it was more of a uh, salacious story involving, you know, women that he was helping get visas into the country for this Medicare doctor. But uh, you have to think that where there's smoke, there's fire, Brian. And and as much as you would like to defend your senator, um, it seems like uh, a number of Democrats are now calling on him to resign. And uh, Representative Andy Kim has also said uh, that he will uh, run against Menendez in the Democratic primary uh, if Menendez does not resign. 
Ron, we are, I, I, I'm, I'm saddened. I'm, and frankly, I'm shocked at your behavior right now. This is a country of innocence until proven guilty. Um, you can't, um, you don't punish a man simply because where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, we, are, um, we, are, we are required to assume that he is innocent until he is found guilty by a dozen peers in a court of law where evidence has been proven. He has already been um, been targeted by the Department of Justice before, and they failed to convict him. They they didn't they didn't um, you know they were unable to to prove their case. He he walks he walks the streets with his head up high. There is no stain or smear against him. Um, and uh, uh, to just sit there and say once again, oh you know, heaven forbid, we're talking about the bad behavior of a, of a Republican politician. Let's go find a Democrat who we think we can go for. Um, and do and and what do they do? It's just the worst. They go after a proud Hispanic politician, a man who has shown that um, that you know that there there is no um, Caucasian ceiling in Congress. That it is a place of that will welcome minorities, welcome people who um, whose whose heritage is not um, you know from the the, the Mayflower directly. Um, you know, a, a man like Menendez. Uh, you know, the name Menendez belongs in Congress. Um, we have enough, um, you know, uh, I don't know, Romneys and Gingriches. We have enough of those. We need some more Menendez. I mean, it is uh, His Hispanic Heritage Month, so it is a shame that they chose this particular month uh, to bring these charges. So I I'm sure you will be out uh, protesting uh, for his innocence later on. It smells fishier than my gym sneakers, Ron. That's all I have to say. <laughs> All right. Also uh, taking place in the Senate this past week, uh, Senator Chuck. But Schumer. by the way, I'm so, I'm I'm real sorry to, to you know, but um, but it sounds like this guy's wildly guilty. Also, oh yeah, yeah. Does. I mean, like if you, like I actually read an article. I think it was on the Times, um, where um, they just listed all the different um, uh, you know, in the um, indictment against him, it listed all of the um, stories. That there, that the Department of Justice is saying that they can prove, um, you know, the, uh, the gifts, the trading for favors, and whatnot. Wildly guilty, um, and um, it just also the other thing that sticks to me about the um, uh, the state of politics right now is that um, we have a Democratic senator who was um, indicted on charges of corruption. And um, by and large, the Democratic Party, who um, uh, he is a member of, uh, have all stood up and immediately demanded his re resignation. They do not want a, um, uh, you know, one of their own uh, who to be who's suspected of sure. um, corruption. Meanwhile, you've got the other side of the aisle, who uh, the Republicans, who are absolutely, um, you know, calling for his resignation as well. When there is charges of corruption against a Republican uh, a congressman, there is absolutely no effort by by their own party um, to drive them out. Still to this day, um, a voting member of our House of Representatives is George Santos from Long Island, who um, basically ran on a platform consisting of nothing but lies um, as to his qualifications. And the Republicans have yet to take any step um, uh, uh, realistically um, towards uh, 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 pushing him out of Congress. They want that Republican vote. Um, the lack of uh, backbone um, uh, within the Republican Party, despite their stance of the moral um, higher ground, it's just wild to me. All right. The, the real Brian shines through finally. Thank God. Also still, in the Senate this week, uh, Chuck Schumer announced Monday that the uh, Senate would no longer uh, enforce the uh, the dress code on the uh, the Senate floor, um, calling for business attire, um, as expected, uh, the the Republicans kind of losing their minds, saying this is the result of Senator John Fetterman, uh, who tends to favor Carhartt work shirts, hoodies, and shorts um, when he's going to official events and and while walking the Senate office buildings. Uh, Brian, your thoughts on this? I mean, I, I while I don't feel a dress code is necessary i think maybe a nice business casual if you're going to be a senator isn't a ridiculous idea 
I think there should be some dress code. I mean, I do believe that you 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 are setting yourself up when you uh, uh, join the the United States Congress as as a um, as a leader, as an example, somebody that that people should be looking up to and basing um, you know a, as a standard for behavior. I think that a hoodie and some cargo shorts um, with some flip flops is uh, is beneath the station of a congressperson. Agreed. I'm and, sorry. Uh, I just, I, you know, I, I, I don't know why we're looking the other way uh, for John Fetterman. I don't know why he gets um, uh, to be allowed to walk like, uh, I mean, no offense. I, I don't know that I would wear that to go get coffee at Wawa or Sheets. And, Excuse me. He's from Pennsylvania. I should have made the Sheets, sheets reference. Um, and this was, uh, this was brought up by none other than that paragon of virtue. Uh, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, writing on Twitter, quote, the Senate is no longer enforcing a dress code for senators to appease Fetterman is disgraceful. Dress code is one of society's standards that set etiquette and respect for our institutions. Stop lowering the bar. Um, and he responded to, he responded to uh, Greene, uh, who is the same person that showed stolen nude photos of Hunter, Hunter Biden in a congressional hearing in July. He said, sure. thankfully, the nation's lower chamber lives by a higher code of conduct, uh, displaying dingling pics in public hearings. And he also, I gotta say, I wish I had written this down. He also made a, uh, a comment uh, about Lauren Boebert um, where he said, well, maybe I should wear a revealing dress and, you know, rub some guy's hog in public and then maybe that'll be acceptable. He said that. I believe that so. something along those lines. Good for him. I'm trying to I'm trying to see if the tweet is still up. He is wearing a, a, a shirt and tie in his Twitter profile picture. In his Twitter. Yeah, but that could be photoshopped. Uh, true. You don't know. And he doesn't really tweet a lot. What do you think? Uh, well, it's I, I think his his office. He, re he replies a lot is what he does. Hmm. So what you're saying is he's not capable of an original thought. He just he just tacks on. Um, Ron, do you think that we should have a dress code for the podcast? Uh, um, I don't know. I, you know, I think uh, I think perhaps we're good the way we are. I mean, I, I personally liked it when you were wearing different Ron T-shirts every single week. I think if there was a change to make. Um, I would maybe go back to wearing a different Ron shirt each and every week. For those that were, the, for those that are, um, you know, uh, longtime uh, uh, viewers of the show, when Ron was champion during his waning months, um, he really got let the. I would say you were your power lust um, had taken over. Um, I don't know about that. Well, you you would issued you you had Matt directive um, uh, create a a memo that I was to wear a shirt with your name on it every week for the you know during the show. I mean, I thought that was, um, I mean, to, to just show your, um, you know, your, your absolute, uh, uh, leanings towards fascism. I mean, it was concerning towards the end. Was it, were you, were you, were you concerned? Were you disturbed? Ron, under my championship, you are <laughs> been allowed to wear whatever you want. This, this, this beautiful wrestling belt, this, this, 100% American, 51% champion. This wrestling belt has said, you know, that we live in a in a democratic age here on the podcast. People can wear what they want. John Fetterman can wear what he wants on this podcast. What I do like is he's he's done some quick responses like when Nate uh, when Nate Silver talked about it, he said I dress like you predict uh when Ron DeSantis uh, commented, he said, "I dress like you campaign," and now he has uh, he has released some new gear, uh, some new hoodie gear uh, with his uh, his name on it. So uh, it's going to be interesting. So, so he's so his merch store is of hoodies. Uh, he's apparently he's added uh, he's added that to uh, to his merch store. How do you feel about him uh, representing you? Because I know that um, he's. I know at the time you were happy that it wasn't Dr. Oz that won right. your um, the, the Senate seat, but now that you've got Fetterman for oh, what is it, two years at this point? Uh, roughly, yes. One year? No, yeah, a, a year and a half. We'll call it. Yeah, about that. How is it? Uh, how do you feel as a uh, Pennsylvania resident? You know, I will say it. It is tough to uh, to judge his performance because he, you know, he was on a, a leave of absence uh, for a period of time, um, dealing with his mental health issues. So 
I th- I would say the jury's uh, still out on uh, what he's he's able to be doing. Hmm. Okay. I mean, do you have a do you have a take on it? Do I have a take on it? No, I don't have a take on it. You always have a take on things. That's why that's why we do the damn show. No, I really don't have a take on it. I'm, I I mean, I don't feel that I have anything to say. I mean, as as a as a proud resident of New Jersey, I can sit there and talk about Bob Menendez. I can say that he has represented us with a, a head held up high. Um, I don't believe that I can speak about John Fetterman. It's not my place. Okay. Fair enough. You can talk enough. about him. Um, I I'm, you you know, again, I will uh we'll we'll keep an eye on him and uh, ask me uh, six months from now. And I'll give you my opinion. Will I have to couch you outside? Uh, very possible. Very possible. Um, oh earlier last week, uh, we found out about a uh, a a, a gift. Uh, uh, excuse me, a prisoner exchange with Iran, yep. where we received five Americans that had been held on uh, what were considered trumped up or false charges for sure. a number of years, anywhere from five to seven years, in exchange for the release of six billion dollars uh, in funds that were being held uh, that belonged to the government of Iran. Um, very mixed reaction to this deal. Brian, what's what's your thoughts? I thought, um, you know, uh, the truth be told is as long as, um, you know, it was the best deal that we could make, um, I see nothing wrong with it. It really is. Um, how do I say this? I mean, this is America. You know, no man, woman or child gets left behind. How do we allow an American citizen to languish within a foreign power without trying to do um, everything that we can to um, to rescue them. Um, right. You know, I, th- I think the days are, are gone where we can act, you know, unilaterally sending in our military into foreign land. Oh, no, we did that with Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. So I guess we could do it. Um, but yeah, I just I, I think the days where we just send in the military to, uh, you know, start when fight wars are over. I think, uh, you know, the fact was this was uh, money that uh, Iran had, you um, uh, been owed by South Korea um, during the Trump administration. They had sold some oil to South Korea uh, just before Trump had enacted some sanctions. And then uh, South Korea held the money back um, uh, after the sanctions went through. So in theory, this was never our money to begin with. So it's not as if we're paying Iran. Um, right. I know it's and being also, you know, misconstrued um, as. Yeah. Also, you know, while... While the use of the money uh, has been released to Iran, you know, the, the United States government still controls the actual account and says that they will only release funds for, uh, you know, provisions like food, medicine, things of that nature. Because, you know, obviously, I think the Republicans were concerned that Iran might use this, you know, to enrich their uh, their nuclear program. But it does seem like, you know, the the Republicans aren't going to be happy with any way that Joe Biden gets Americans back from these countries. You know, we, we saw that when Brittany Griner, um, we did a prisoner exchange to get Brittany Griner back. And, um, you know, we gave up, you know, a, a, one of the arms dealers for our, the, to send back to Russia. And, you know, there was outrage over that. And there was, I forget the name of the American that's still being held over in Russia. Why don't we do more to get him home? And then, you know, this time we, we you know, to your point, we, we, release funds that weren't mm-hmm. really ours to begin with to get five right. Americans back that, you know, have, have been languishing in jail cells for, for years and years and years. And apparently yeah. that's not the way to do it either, but no one has an answer is the best way to do it. But however way, however way Biden is doing it is apparently not the right way. Correct. Correct. There was, well, I mean, we really have, um, you know, such a, a culture now in politics where it is, you know, um, you know, I'm against everything that my, uh, 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 you know, I'm against everything that people in my party are not for. Right. And it's, you know, it's, it's a shame. Like there does need to be, in order for stuff to happen, there does need to be some level of bipartisanship. Sure. I think you and I are a perfect example of it. Um, you know, you living in suburban Pennsylvania, um, Elkins Park, uh, you know, uh, area. I don't, you know, I'm not sure where you currently live, but, um, you know, uh, Bill Cosby lived there. Mark Levin lived there, uh, you know, far right wing author uh, we learned about earlier this week. Um, you know, it's a very problematic um, 
uh, geographic area. I still, you know, I look past, you know, your your Republican leanings and allow, uh, you know, allow myself to do this show with you on a weekly basis. And and we appreciate that, Brian. We appreciate your open mindedness. Um, you. Let's hop over to an area we haven't talked about lately. We haven't talked about personal finance lately. Um, let's look at the markets with stock. Stonks. All right. And not really stonks this time, but more NFTs. Um, there was a report that came out this past week uh, that said that most non-fungible tokens um, have no value. Um, cryptocurrency analyst Daph Gamble determined that out of the 73,257 total NFT collections that analyzed, uh, close to 70,000 had a zero Ether market cap, uh, which is to say zero. Uh, even when looking at 8,850 brand name top NFT collections like CryptoPunks, 18% of them now have a zero floor price and 41% are worth between $5 and $100. The analytics site goes on to say if it's possible, uh, the situation it may be even bleaker than the numbers suggest. Quote, for example, a MAC contract on Ethereum has a floor price of $13,234,204, but it's a, uh, I hate these pop up ads, get off the screen, but it's all time sales is only $18. Right. Listen, um, this is what you call a classic uh, dump and pump scheme. Um, you know, you the the, the value I think it's of pump and dump. No, this is the opposite. He's he's <laughs> he's dumping, and he's then dumping he's and pumping, pumping after. So right. you you've got the. I mean, this is why you, it's you know the world of NFTs and and um and and crypto. It's so wild to me to have, to to be on this ride, um, because you you get so many of these reports and stories where people will um you know tank you know, a particular uh, 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 cryptocurrency um, in, in hopes that the value of it will um, immediately plummet so that they can jump in and buy it on the cheap. Um, you know, I think that what the, the, the author of this story, this report, clearly are huge fans of NFTs, see the value in NFTs. So they feel like if we write a story about how NFTs are worthless, that they automatically will be able to buy um, such great NFT projects that are out there. I mean, everyone's talking about Board Ape, but I mean, let's not let's not forget Monster Chompers, um, uh, which is also on the Ethereum blockchain. That NFT project brought by Alan Robert of Life of Agony. I mean, those are just um, you know the interest is is incredible in those NFTs. Um, so I, I would question the the accuracy and validity of any story that says otherwise. Well, I think the difference is, Alan, uh, reasonably priced as NFTs, where I think you're seeing some collections out there that were wildly overpriced and people bought into them. Oh, oh I believe that. Always, I, I believe that as well. All right. Uh, let's move on. We have another segment that people love to hate and hate to love. It's but the drag queens are the problem. Um, yeah. We keep trying to hunt down situations uh, in which drag queens are out there grooming or, uh, or you know, molesting children in some way. Sure. Uh, again, relatively unsuccessful uh, to do so again this week. Yeah. Uh, two stories this week going out to Ohio, where two police officers from the Columbus area are being investigated for their response to a sexual misconduct case involving a child after a video, video of them appearing to blame the 11-year-old girl for creating child porn went viral. Uh, two Columbia police officers, a female and a male, were seen talking to the girl's father on their front porch six hours after he allegedly called to report that a man online had manipulated his daughter into sending him pictures of herself. Um, the dad tells officers he called because he wanted them to talk to his daughter to get her to realize what this was before conceding that he knew that there really wasn't much that he could do about it. The female officer is then heard on the doorbell camera video telling his dad, telling the dad that his preteen daughter, quote, could probably get charged with child porn. 
who she can she's 11 years old he responds to which the officer replies she's creating it right the dad replies she's 11 years old the female officer replies doesn't matter she's still making porn jesus uh, so the uh does, the does anybody stuff. train these cops on <laughs> sensitivity uh, apparently not. Apparently not. Um, so the uh, the Columbus uh, Police Department Twitter account um, has acknowledged that there is an investigation going on. And also the uh, the police commissioner apologized for the officer's handling of it. Uh, but they really haven't said too much more in the last week out of it. But yeah, just a, a perfect example of, uh, of victim blaming. But then again, isn't Ohio the same state where a 10 year old needed to go to another state because... They weren't going to let her get an abortion, even though sure. she had been raped. Sure. Ohio is. So does that um, really yeah. surprise you? We should rank the states. Okay. We should do we'll an episode that. where we just rank the states. All right. From 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 worst to best. I will work on that. Maybe that could Obviously, be our. Uh... Philadelphia. I mean, uh, Pennsylvania comes in second in terms of best state. New right. Jersey. Uh, New Jersey clearly, number one. Is the favorite is the best state ever. Maybe we'll work on that. What do you, that you want? With, what are you, the Iron Sheik? New Jersey, number one. New Jersey, number All one. Other states. <sighs> uh, next in Breath of Drag Queens are the problem. A fourth New York City schools employee was arrested this week after allegedly harming a student. This is according to the NYPD. Uh, Fazia Nazneen. Uh, age 49, was arrested and charged in northeastern Queens for endangering the welfare of a child on Friday afternoon. Uh, according to police officials, a six-year-old student kicked a ball into Naznin's face. She then grabbed the child by the collar and threw him against the wall. Um, the police said the student began to throw up a couple of minutes later, but when the child tried to get up, Naznin pushed him to the ground. Uh, this was a day after 70-year-old Mohammed Baksh was taken into custody at a school in the Bronx after a 13-year-old girl reported that he had grabbed her breast while trying to give her a hug. Um, an hour earlier on Thursday, police said teacher Brian Thomas was arrested as an, at an Upper West Side school for allegedly punching a 12-year-old boy in the chest. And then on Monday, 40-year-old David Moore was arrested for allegedly striking a 12-year-old boy in the rib cage during a verbal dispute. What so a quite the week in New York there. City schools. <sighs> but Brian, the drag queens that are the problem. It's the drag queens that are the problem. Clearly, clearly, it's not poorly trained police officers. Let's see. What else do we have, Brian? What uh, what's what other stories do we have here that you want to get to? Um, I forgot to ask you, Ron. What yes. are you watching? What am I watching? I watched on Hulu um, last night their new movie, uh, horror movie, supposed to be. Um, no one will save you. And no one will save you from how bad of a movie this is. It was oh. so it was it's a story about this woman who is ostracized from the rest of the town that she lives in. You slowly learn through the story uh, why she was ostracized. And then there is an alien invasion and the aliens are taking over the bodies of the people in the village and she is fighting back against it. And it is just you wait and you wait for a payoff and then there is no payoff. Oh, that's a shame. What are you going to do? So I think I'm trying to think if I watched anything else this week. I didn't really watch a lot this week. I'm not going to lie. What are you yeah. watching, Brian? Um, the I started um, the uh, final season of Sex Education on um, Netflix. It's a show. I think this is season four. Started. I think it came out at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, tells the story in this kind of. Um, I don't want to say uh, uh, it, it. It's not necessarily based in real times, but it is um, very. Um, it's a. It, it tells the story of high school students this season. Now they're now uh, uh, entering college and um, uh, you know post high school world where um, you know and it's just uh, uh, you know y the youth dealing with their sex issues. It's a very LGBTQ plus friendly show. Um, very much, uh, you know, be who you are, um, and um, everything is accepted uh, mentality on this show. I uh, support it fully. All right. I did forget. I did watch uh, the second season of Murdaugh Murders, A Southern Scandal. 
Um, this was a follow-up on the Alex Murdoch trial. Um, I did not finish the first season because it came out right after the other, like Murder in Low Country, I think was which the was way, which was to me, I thought it was so good there was no need to watch anything else. It, yeah, but this was so season two was a follow-up um, leading up to the trial, the trial uh, and the sentencing. So this mm -hmm. was this was interesting. You did get to see a little bit more detail than I think maybe the news carried during this entire process. Uh, but when you after you watch all of it, you can't possibly think he's not guilty. Like you can't doubt the the, the conviction in any way, shape or form. Do they talk to the surviving son? He they asked to interview him. He did not want to be interviewed for the uh, for the docuseries. I am fascinated by, um, uh, like right now, I would put him in the top 20 list of, um, uh, of people who are alive that I would like to share a meal with. I have so many questions for that kid. Sure. Um, you know, how do you still talk to your father? Um, does he think that his father killed his mother and his brother? Um, all these, you know, pretty much I would just... I would just keep asking that question for an hour and a half until he got well, left. And and you have to think that he's he still supports his father in some way, shape, or form. Because otherwise, like this kid could back the Brinks truck up for for you know, I mean, think what he would get paid if he agreed to do like an exclusive interview with you know TMZ or one of the networks or Netflix. Like, I mean, that would be you know his but it, it appears that he still supports his father, even if you look at you know, his, his, his testimony during the trial and everything else. Sure. So, um, I would say if you skip season one of Murdoch murders, continue to skip season one, jump to season two and watch it. Okay. Very good. Um, right. There was a story in the sports world that I wanted to talk about. Um, right. and that was the Oakland A's who oh, have yeah. been, um, uh, really just a, a stain on the image of baseball. Uh, my favorite sport, I think yours too. You know, you mentioned the Yankees earlier. However, what we're seeing going on in Oakland is a owner who has um, decided that they want to they want to um, take the team out of Oakland and take them to Las Vegas, where they believe they will be um, more profitable. And to do that, what they have done is gutted the talent on the team, uh, uh, traded away anybody of value, um, refused to pay um, you know anybody their worth. So what they're really doing is fielding a glorified minor league team, uh, you know, at a major league park to try to become an eyesore in the sport such that um, they're forced um, to get approval by the uh, league to move. Um, you know, the fans at various times in the season have held uh, rallies to try to prevent Oakland fr uh, uh, from losing their baseball team, whatnot. Um, but this past week, there was just a, a, a pure moment of embarrassment uh, out of Oakland. Um, first baseman for the Detroit Tigers, uh, Miguel Cabrera, um, certain Hall of Famer, um, yeah. uh, first ballot, I'm assuming. Uh, the guy has thousands of hits and hundreds of home runs. Should have looked up the, the statistics before we were talking about, but I'm well, sure just, Matt can, if you're, if Matt will put him in at, the, uh, yes. If you're looking at hits, he is currently a thousand hits of the next closest active player. He's got like 3,124 yeah. hits and no one, no other active player right now is in a position where they will hit 3,000 in their career. Right. It's, I mean, he literally is, um, and he's retiring this year. So as, you know, as the norm with players that are retiring, um, as they go on their farewell tour of the, on the last season of their of their career, um, you know, uh, when they visit stadiums, there there is some kind of retirement ceremony, you know, the same kind of nonsense where they play a video of you know this player's greatest moments against the team, et cetera, et cetera, and each each team gives them some type of gift. I remember when Mariano Rivera retired, um, you know, he received a couple rocking chairs from different teams, um, broken bats, whatnot. Um, uh, Oakland decided um, that they were going to put in the least amount of effort. Um, and he's even gotten some, he got like a guitar from Cleveland sure. uh, representing the Hall of Fame. He got a, a painting from the Yankees. So he's gotten some nice gifts from some of the other teams so far. So in Oakland, Ron, what did he get? Uh, he received a $90 bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. Now it's a, mm -hmm. a four and a quarter star 
2020 Cabernet Sauvignon. But yes, okay. um, 89.95, and that's not even the worst part, is it, Brian? No. What is the worst part, Ron? Uh, the worst part is that uh, in 2009, Miguel Cabrera uh, went through a, a treatment program for alcohol addiction and uh, was arrested for DUI in 2011. So, so the man is a recovering the man is a recovering alcoholic, and as their farewell gift to him, they got him a moderately priced bottle of wine. Really, just shows you the trash organization that is the Oakland Athletics. Uh, well, let's not forget, Brian, if you want something good to spend your money on, we are now available on Cameo. Uh, if you need something recorded, uh, birthday wishes. Uh, if you're a Major League Baseball player on a retirement tour, we can wish sure. them well. Uh, you know, graduation announcements, engagements, whatever. If you go to cameo.com forward slash Ron Bryan podcast 8939, uh, it's only $10. And uh, we are proud tonight to announce a, uh, a special promotion. We are giving away cameos for free to the first five people that go to Cameo and uh, and request it. So all you have to do is uh, go to Cameo, request it, pay for it, and we will uh, we will what we'll, we'll, we'll PayPal it back to you. Sure. We will Venmo you. We'll, we'll zeal you. One or the other. But the I'll first the five Cameos get it for free. That's how confident we are that uh, these are going to be some fire Cameos. Uh, that you get from us. So that's cameo.com forward slash Ron Bryan podcast 8939. You can also go to our Instagram page. Um, it's in the links in the bio, or as always, just go to Ron and Brian podcast.com. Ron, that's not the only way people can spend their money wisely. Of course not. You can also become a Patreon subscriber. It's what the cool kids do. It's what our closest of friends have all done. Uh, also, when you go to Ron and Brian podcast.com in the upper right hand corner, you will see a link to become a patron. Uh, you can join for as little as $5 a month, but at $10 a month or higher, uh, you get to join our live after dark which will be taking place at 9.30 tonight. And tonight being the last Sunday of the month, this is going to be our pajama party where all of our Patreon subscribers get to come on live with us. And we've got Can You Beat Ron? That's right. It's a trivia contest where you try and beat me. And if you do, uh, you will get to $25 donated to the charity of your choice. And I believe we are back at 25 because I did lose last time. I thought you won last time. Did I? I will check, but I thought you won last time. You know, you're, you're right. I lost the time before that. So now it would be $50 would go to the charity of your choice. Yes, uh, correct. If you are able to beat Ron tonight. I do not know the topic. I have asked Brian the topic. He will not tell me. Um, I will, but I, nope. know, I know our Patreon uh, folks will be, uh, will be anxious for the competition. Yeah, Brian. Um, it's a great. Well, yes. No, I'm just saying, Brian. What do you have to say about? It? Listen, I uh, I look forward to the Can You Beat Ron uh, contest that we have on a regular basis. It's um, it's one of the high points of my month that we do every other month, uh, and um, it's just it's it's a fun time. You know, our pajama parties are legendary. Uh, you know, a lot of people say that it's 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 their um, primary reason for for being members of the Patreon. Some people say that they do it to help financially support us um, because they uh, are big fans of the show and they want to um, say thank you. But most people are saying, listen, it's after it's it's the after dark pajama party. It's a once a month occurrence where we get to come on the show as um, as fans of the show, friends of the show. Um, and we get to try and win some of Ron and Brian's money. Um, always goes to a good cause. You pick a charity. Um, and it's just fun, 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 fun. There you go. Well, we're looking forward to it. That'll be starting up in about 26 minutes. So you still have time to register for that Patreon and join us this evening. Brian, anything else before we wrap things up this week? Love you, buddy. Thanks for doing this again. All right. Love you too, my friend. Thank you all for tuning in. Be good to yourselves and each other damn that would have been better if i had the outro queued up oh god damn it ron i know
We'll catch you next week. Thank you for joining us on the Ron and Brian podcast. We're live each week on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. You can find prior episodes, links to our social media, and everything else Ron and Brian at ronandbrianpodcast.com. See you again next